Should a woman over a certain age stop wearing deeper colors on her eyes? Should she stop wearing color on her eyes? Should she start sticking with only browns or tans or grays at times? What do you think? Personally, I think that that is not what we should do. I think that we should do what we like. If you like color and you've worked with it all your life, then go for it. It can be absolutely beautiful on anyone's eyes. But also, if you're somebody that has never ever thought about trying color on your eyes and you think now that I'm in my 50s, I might have beautiful palettes that have these colors in them, but I can't use that anymore because I'm over a certain age. Uh, no, 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 no. I do not feel like that. I feel like as long as you're tasteful with your makeup or as long as it makes you happy, go for it. There is no reason that we can't continue to do some of the looks that these younger gals do. We might have to modify it a little bit, yes, and that's what I'm going to help you with today. I feel like you can look beautiful and classy at any age, and if you want to wear color, you can look beautiful and classy wearing color too. This green look that I brought you today, I've been wearing in almost every video lately, uh, just because I wanted to for the first couple times, and then because you all loved it so much. We're going to go through the complete makeup look so that you can see how I tied everything together. Together. Keep in mind that you don't want to go too crazy on the color that's on your lips or for blush. You really do want the central focus to be your eyes instead of just that you have too much makeup on. So we're going to go from primer, clear to setting powder at the very end. I hope that you do enjoy this. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. And let's talk a whole lot of color and how to get this specific eye look today in this tutorial. All right, starting off with primers, my good old standby from Anastasia Beverly Hills for my eyeshadow primer. This one, if you guys haven't heard me talk about it before, just make sure eyeshadow look vibrant and brighter and it adheres the eyeshadow like crazy. Next up is the new No Filter Primer from ColourPop. Really enjoying this one. Gives me a nice smooth canvas. Feels hydrating without being super drying and it feels gripping to the primer too. So I am really enjoying that. Really push that into your pores. Once I'm done with that, I'll go in with some powder. I'm using the Rare Beauty powder. This is the new one that she released. Um, I think this is supposed to be a little bit glowing, but I don't know if it is or not. For me, it's not really glowing at all or illuminating, but I'm going to be putting this in between my um, foundation and my primer. If you have not seen that trick from me before, you can go over and pop over to a tutorial that I have that is just about doing the foundation. It's very fun and very easy, makes your makeup last a lot longer and you can use a lot less makeup as well. Now going in with the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation, mine is in the color MN1 and I'm going to take one pump to begin with and I have to correct this just a little bit. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of my blue mixing pigment from LA Girl in there and a tiny bit of my white as well because it's not light enough either. These get to be a mess as you can see, they're well loved by me. <laughs> and I am just going to mix that on the back of my hand. What that's gonna do, it's gonna change it. It's gonna be a little bit lighter and a little bit less orange, and that is perfect for me. Taking my BK Beauty 101 brush, spraying it with some Max Fix Plus. I just find that that helps to distribute the foundation a little bit more evenly, and then I'm going to just work with this and get this put down all over. One pump gave me pretty good coverage, but I am gonna to have to use a second pump to go down my neck and my decollete. Now, let me tell you, this foundation itself is quite a thick foundation. It is full coverage. It is not serum-like, like it says on the label, but it does give really good coverage. So if you're somebody that is looking for that, then you might really like this foundation. The other thing is that it lasts a really, really long time. It is a really good foundation. I'm picking that up and now I'm gonna go across my neck neck and my decollete. Now I'm going to go on to do concealer from Catrice. This is their True Skin Concealer. I love this stuff. It's really good. And I'm going to put a dot out here and then I'm going to work that in all the way across my eyes. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter color, the lightest color they have in their range. And I'm going to put that in the inner corner to bring light. Make sure you bring that up into the inner corner all the way in. That's where I get a lot of darkness 
and it really helps to do this. Because of time constraints, I will be doing my brows off of camera, but today I'm using a little sample that I got of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Definer, and I am using the Ulta, let's see, I think this is the Brow Gel brow tint. As always, I will make sure that all of the information for everything that I use is down below so that you can see that. I will really quickly show you that the brow definer has a triangle tip on it and then the brow tint has just an itty bitty little spoolie that works wonderful to grab all the little hair that you have there on your eyebrows. I'm using the Temptress palette from Alter Ego. So what I wanna start off with is kind of a soft wash of peach, and since there isn't a peach in this palette, I'm gonna go down into that brilliant orange and I'm gonna mix it with the white color that's right there. Tapping off my brush, which is a Refer 01 brush, and then just starting right out here at the tail end of the eye, and bringing that transition color in. Now it's a little bit, can you see how saturated it is? So I'm gonna deposit some of it over here onto this eye. And then what I will do is once that's deposited good enough, I'll go back over here and I will begin to just buff it out. Now it's still a little bit too dramatic. I don't want that to be that dramatic. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna go down into that white and load the brush so that I can tone that down and then just go over top of it and it's really gonna help tone it down greatly. So if you have a peach in your collection that you'd like to use for this look, just grab it. You don't need one of these other eyeshadow palettes. As you're working with this, what I want you to do is work it up towards the tail of your brow and bring it in about two thirds of the way in the eye um, kind of towards the crease, but up on this part of your eye, not on your mobile lid and not in the crease. We're kind of staying away from those two areas. We're just kind of concentrating on everything that's above and taking that shadow as far above on the outside so that we lift the eye instead of the eye being turned down with some colors. All right, now I'm going in with a BK Beauty 205 brush back into that same palette and I'm going to use this kind of a taupey brown color. I love that this is a little bit more cool. All right, I'm going just right above the actual crease. So I'm just right above it and then I'm gonna push this down into that crease. And then I'm gonna bring it down towards the eye in that V shape that everybody talks about. And then I'm gonna turn it over because it's angled right there. So I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna bring that brush towards the tail of the brow again. And just working that color so that it is kind of just blending out and up. Now that I've got that on, you can see how it kind of diminished that orange color or that peach color I was working with. So it really just kind of, I don't know, kind of made it a little softer. Now I'm gonna do the other eye, same thing. Go down just above the crease, lay the color down, and bring it over about halfway to two thirds in the crease and then down into the triangle area or down into the very outer part of the mobile lid. Make sure that when you're working on blending that you blow that out towards the top of, or the tail of the eyebrow, excuse me. Okay, now I'm gonna work with the ColourPop Meant To Be palette, one of my very favorite palettes. I just love everything about this palette. The color in the middle is a very bright, just soft green. That's the color that we're gonna go onto that inner uh, lid with that inner mobile lid and I'm just going to lay this down with my finger I'm going to bring that about halfway across my eyelid and then I should have done this on that eyelid But I forgot you can take any sort of setting spray that you have it doesn't have to be anything specific I'm using the morphe continuous mist setting spray and I'm just going to spray lightly spray my finger that has that eyeshadow on it. And what that does is two things. It's gonna help adhere the eyeshadow to your eye, but it's also going to take away any sort of crinkling that you normally might get. If you're an older woman that does have a lot of texture, it might help with that as well. All right, you notice that I stayed away from the very inner corner. I don't want it to look green. Next, I'm going down into the color that is just above it, which is a softer, little bit brighter of a green. Spray that finger again, and I'm going to just touch that on this outer part. Just so that the whole entire lid 
is covered with your green. And I touched that part up there, so I'm kind of blending it with my finger. Since those two colors are so close, they blend together just seamlessly. So you can't really even tell, but there is a gradient on there. Now what I want you to do next is go back into that color that we had and what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go over top of what we just laid down. So we're just gonna go right over top of this color out here to blend everything together and to give this just a little bit more depth right out there at the outer part. And you can go right over top of the metallic. It will um, kind of dull it just a tiny bit, but you're really wanting things to be seamlessly put together. So now I've gone back to that ori original uh, Refer 01 brush, and I'm coming clear in here to the inner corner and all the way out, and I'm just going on top of the the actual shadow except for that very inner part where I want the most brightness to be and I am buffing everything out and that means that a little bit of that green is going to get up onto the brown that we did which is fine it really needs to look seamless and it needs to look blended and this helps it to do both all right, at this point, I want you to choose. You can either leave your waterline just natural with nothing in it, or you can use a pop of color in it. I'm going to use the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Evergreen Aligner. It's in evergreen, evergreen, emerald. It's an emerald. And I'm gonna use that in my waterline just to pop this color a whole bunch. A little secret for you with your waterline is that putting two coats, not just one, will actually help it adhere better. You put one coat on and it seems like our eyes blink really a lot when we first do that. And then you put the other coat on and it kind of adheres to that first coat. So just a little bit of a tip there with the waterline, do two coats, you might like it a lot better. And then lastly, I'm gonna go in with that same color. On my Sigma, this is the E30. I love this liner pencil brush. It's it's so good and I'm just going to shadow that bottom part a little bit I don't want to do too much darkness down there I'm next gonna go in with the ColourPop pretty fresh new pressed powder that they have this one is in light and I just I really am enjoying this I'm gonna go ahead and set that under eye area this is a light enough powder that I can do that with it. The other thing is the puff will help you as well. The puff will help pick up any excess and it helps not to deposit too much of the powder. I'm also going to use that to set in the areas where I get the most break apart and where my makeup needs extra little bit adherence because of it rubs off there first. So I'm gonna just set with that just a little bit. I decided also to use one of Rare Beauty's highlighters. I've really fallen in love with Rare Beauty. I think that their makeup is just gorgeous. So I put that on the back of my hand and then I'll pick it up with a brush. I'm using an hourglass dual sided, um, I think it's just a powder brush. And you can see as I'm putting that on, how gorgeous and illuminating that is. No shimmer in it whatsoever. It's just got this beautiful light reflecting quality to it. To warm up my skin, I'm using the Milani Silky Matte in Sun Kissed, and this is just their bronzer, but it's got a cool tone to it, so it's gonna be able to do not only my bronzer, but also my contour, which I do in my hairline and on my cheekbones and then across my jaw and down my chin to be able to hide that double saggy chin. I also picked up a new blush from Physicians Formula. This is their butter blush and it's got this cute little pattern in it. I really like that. This one is called Mauvey Mattes and it's got, the main color is a mauve, but it's got several other colors that are gonna swirl together and it works out to be a really pretty color. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on as my blush. I'm using a Rimmel liner. This has everything worn off of it but i'm pretty sure that it's rose quartz i will make sure and i will make sure it's linked down below in the right color i'm also using a rimmel lipstick in number 41 which is just kind of a pale pink and then i'm using one of the new extreme shine lip glosses from Essence and um, again, I will make sure that I link the color of this. Going in and curling my lashes 
and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a little bit of a felt liner across the top close to the lash line just so you know the felt tip eyeliner is from flower beauty it has a very fine tip on it i try i've got my eyeliner done now i try to go extremely close to that lash line and then what i'm going to use is i'm going to use warrior princess on the top i'm sorry i say warrior princess every time flower beauty's lash warrior on the top lashes and then on the bottom i'm going to use item beauty the reason that i'm doing two different ones is because that item beauty one is tiny tiny and it hasn't smudged on me yet so i'm going to do that and i'll be right back one thing that i forgot completely was that we needed that inner corner highlight and i just went in with my refer 28 brush and right in there into the inner corner and just pull it just a little bit towards the green so we don't look like we have green and then a stop we can just um, brighten that area up but i don't want green to be in the inner corner that would be too much of a distraction from the eye look and you would only be thinking why did she put green down in that inner corner all right i hope that you did enjoy seeing this tutorial on how easy it is for a mature woman to be able to use color on her eyes you can do this with any color you want blues purples pinks oranges any color that you like that you want to use to brighten up your look go for it i think that this is very easy and very very wearable for any woman of any age to use on her eyes if you have any questions at all leave those in the comment section below please and i'll be happy to answer any of those and if you have any comments on an older woman wearing any sort of color on her eyes you're welcome to leave those too let's be respectful and kind to each other as we do that though and very soon we will meet back here in my next video but in the meantime please take care of yourselves i hope that you are happy and healthy and doing well and i love you very much goodbye my friends mm -hmm.